This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aperoa's first and only climate-positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar, and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aperoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. As with last week's show, we're starting with more quarterly and year-end rundowns smooshed together in a kind of rapid-fire roundup. BMW was celebrating a great first quarter with global sales of 82,700 EVs split across its various brands, up 28% year-on-year. The majority of those vehicles were BMW badged, with 78,691 i-badged cars selling, up 40.6% year-on-year. BMW also celebrated making its one millionth EV last quarter. Here's to the next million. Volvo celebrated an all-time global sales record for the first quarter, with EV sales up 43% year-on-year in March alone. This led to a quarterly increase of 27% year-on-year, with 38,171 EVs selling, overtaking plug-in hybrid sales for the brand. However, it is worth noting that while Volvo set an EV sales record for the brand, EV sales in the US and China fell in Q1. Nissan published its US sales figures for Q1 this week, with sales remaining barely unchanged from this time last year, or indeed from the final quarter of last year. In Q1, Nissan reported 5,284 EV sales in the US, up 1% from this time last year. However, Nissan's EV sales as a percentage of overall Nissan brand sales dropped, down from 2.4% to 2.2%. Toyota is celebrating an impressive growth in battery electric and plug-in hybrid sales during the first quarter, with a lion's share of that increase coming from plug-in hybrids. Across the Toyota and Lexus brands, 3,500 EVs were sold, up 86% year-over-year, while plug-in hybrids were up 94% to 14,332. Fuel cell vehicles fell by 74%. Lucid was also setting its own brand records during the first quarter, recording 1,967 deliveries during that time, up 37.4% year-on-year. However, it wasn't all good news, with Lucid's production falling to 1,728 vehicles, down 25% from the 2,314 it made in the first quarter of last year. Lotus shared its Q4 and full 2023 financial results this week, showing a steady growth as it becomes an all-electric make. Recording revenues of $679 million for the fourth quarter, its gross margin sat at 15%. However, due to the usual high costs of transitioning to electric, it made a net loss of $750 million during FY 2023. Finally, for financials, Mercedes-Benz recorded global first quarter EV sales that were noticeably lower than that for the previous year, recording 47,500 electric models delivered during the first quarter. That's a 15.63% drop year on year. However, given that Mercedes-Benz has been heavily promoting the newer, more capable EQ models it's launching this year, it's no surprise that sales fell in the first quarter. Ford officially announced the details of its 2024 Mustang Mark E family this week, confirming pricing and some significant performance tweaks to boot. For the new model year, there's an all-new rear-wheel drive motor that's lighter than the one found in previous model years and improves overall torque. The new model year also uses a new LFP battery, which adds an additional 20 miles of range for most variants and improves fast charging speed by a claimed 20%. And for those that are bound to ask, for now, the Mustang Mark E keeps its CCS inlet, but is fully compatible with Ford's NAX adapter. The fastest Mustang Mark E is now the Mark E GT Performance upgrade with a 3.3 second sprint time and 11.8 second quarter mile time. One day before a wrongful death civil case against it was due to start in California, surrounding the 2018 fatal crash of a Tesla Model X, Tesla has settled out of court with a family. The high-profile civil court case sought to convict Tesla of negligence and wrongful death after Apple engineer Walter Huang's Model X turned and crashed into an already deployed crash attenuation barrier on US 101 in the San Francisco Bay Area. An NTSB investigation showed it was operating in autopilot auto steer with the radar-assisted cruise control active and apportioned blame between the driver and Tesla, as well as the state of California, for not repairing a previously used crash attenuation barrier. 
Tesla filed to keep the details of the settlement private. Mercedes-Benz has revealed its refreshed EQS sedan, which, as I just noted earlier in this video, is a possible reason why Mercedes-Benz EV sales were lower than expected in Q1. While the EQS has always been something of a luxury car with a heavy emphasis on the passenger experience, the new EQS leans into that more with a new optional rear seat comfort package plus replacing the three-row seat of the previous model years with two executive seats. There's also an increase in battery capacity to 118 kilowatt hours, which increases range by around 11%. Mercedes-Benz also notes an increase in towing capacity means that one can now tow your horse trailer with the Uber Lux sedan, and of course, it also features the promised faux grille upgrade and a return of the stand up y badge. Alfa Romeo has debuted its first ever electric vehicle, a compact SUV called the Alfa Romeo Milano Elettrica. Why the Elettrica at the end? Well, that's because Alfa Romeo is also offering a mild hybrid variant of the same vehicle called the Milano Ibrida. Slotting into the already crowded electric SUV segment, the Elettrica will offer a 54 kilowatt hour or 50.8 kilowatt hour usable battery pack, which will be mated to a 115 kilowatt front wheel drivetrain. There will also be a sportier Electrica Veloce variant that will increase the power to 174 kilowatts and offer a seven-second-ish sprint time, pricing to follow shortly. New reporting from Business Insider, which cites data leaked to it by insiders at Fisker, claims that more than 40,000 people have opted to cancel their Fisker Ocean orders. If this is true, and we should note Fisker has not publicly refuted that reporting, it's terrible news for the embattled automaker, not least because those cancellations are said to be taking place at a rate of between 70 to 80 per day. If they are accurate, it also represents more than $9 million of lost revenue. It certainly is starting to feel as if Fisker's future is now a foregone conclusion, but I've been in this industry long enough to know that sometimes a company can pull itself from the brink at the last minute, as it actually happened to Tesla many years ago. So it's not over until it's over. The same week as Tesla settled out of court over a wrongful death civil case against its autonomous vehicle technology, it has brought back its FSD transfer program for returning customers. Despite CEO Elon Musk claiming in Q3 last year that Tesla would only offer customers just one chance to transfer pre-purchased FSD capabilities from one car to another, it's back, suggesting Tesla really does want existing customers to trade up to a new car. And while we are talking about autonomous driving, Musk announced late last week that Tesla would unveil its first robo-taxi on August the 8th, using a combination of writing which appears unusual for him and which has caused some corners of the internet to take note. We would like to hope it was done unintentionally. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV and so much more. So follow the link below and start that journey today. We often see naysayers in comments trying to portray EVs as playthings of the wealthy and no better for the planet than internal combustion engine vehicles. We've debunked that plenty, but this week a new study from Synapse Energy Economics shows categorically that EV drivers have generated $3 billion of net revenue for utilities in the 10 years between 2011 and 2021. At the same time, that custom is actually helping lower the cost of producing electricity, which could make the grid cheaper for everyone. Also this week, a new study from UC Berkeley shows that vehicle emission rates in San Francisco have dropped 2.6% annually between 2018 and 2022, driven by EV adoption. This results in fewer air particulates, links to respiratory illness and premature death. So go EVs! And finally, there's been a lot of news lately surrounding autonomous vehicle collisions and incidents, and I've always maintained that we should ask autonomous vehicles to pass the very same driving test that we humans must do to be allowed on the road. Looks like Hyundai agrees because earlier this week it published a video showcasing an autonomous Ionic 5 taking part in a simulated driving test in the state of Nevada, 
While this was, I want to reiterate, a simulated test that's basically a bit of a publicity stunt, the car became the first autonomous vehicle to ever take part in and pass a driving test. It passed with flying colours with veteran driving examiner Candice Jones putting it through its paces. Hyundai does note that for the campaign film, some segments were filmed with a human driver behind the wheel, presumably operating as a safety driver as required under state law for segments that weren't filmed on a private road. Either way, well done to Hyundai for the test result and for the clever marketing campaign. Tesla, Ford et al, take note. And on that note, we are in fact done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already, it's time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is so easy to make the switch and in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep Aotearoa beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual, but in the meantime, do check out other great content on this channel, including that made by the amazing Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of your week. Kakete! See you next time.